Hello. I'm Amy Posner. Welcome to the San Francisco School of Copywriting email intensive. So I, got a, I have a lot of factoids throughout this presentation. Um, let's start with this one. According to a recent report from Marketing Sherpa, email marketing now accounts for 19% of the average online budget. And HubSpot reports that the business and personal email has no clear distinction for most professionals, which means that people are opening their email in the evening, they're opening email on the weekends. Um, some people are trying to take advantage of that um, strategically. Uh, I don't have any particular facts on that. But I think with an eye toward marketing from a business point of view, your own business, and also opportunity, and by say your own business, I mean your business or the company you work for, and opportunity if you're planning to freelance and, and write for clients. Um, this, is a, this is a big niche. We'll, we'll talk about um, niches in the last module, but throughout I will mention various things that I've seen and have seen as, as potential opportunities um, for freelance writers. So there's a lot of need uh, for well-written email. Um, email still works. It's still used extensively for marketing and for testing. And it, it's, testing is critical in, in marketing in general. You know the three rules are test, test, and test. But particularly with email, it can give you some really good analytics um, for testing all kinds of things, for testing subject lines, for testing emails, for testing landing pages that you're um, sending people to. Um, and a lot of email programs have, have built-in analytics where you can, you know, see click-throughs and opens and, um, you know, some like Infusionsoft can even, you know, give you the feeling that you're your big brother a little bit and spying on people and seeing what their, what their patterns are um, and responding accordingly. So, you know, this is a subject of debate. People are always asking, you know, do people still read email? Um, email campaigns still work, especially if you have the right target audience in a, in a focused market. You know, email blasts can still work, um, but, you have, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a numbers game. You have to mail a lot, and you have to mail repetitively um, to get people to pay attention. But with a list that you build or buy, um, particularly with a list that you build, you can get a lot of traction. You know, the people who are most likely to buy from you or spend money with you are people who have already spent money with you. So um, we'll talk a lot more about the, about the list building as we move through this presentation. But there are some, there's some good lists that you can buy, too. You have to be careful if it's for you or for a client because some of them are, are just a real ripoff, you know, companies that – um, purport to mail and you know then don't don't really give you statistics. I've seen a lot of a lot of shady things. See, but you have to be careful about who you do business with. Um, subject line obviously is your is your headline. And we all interact with email, so we all have our own ideas and our own our own patterns um, and our own intelligence that that we can use here. And you think about you know what headline what subject lines get you to open email. Um, you know I do not collect a swipe file of them, although I ought to because I see ones periodically. That, that just get my attention. And so um, that's my bad. I should, I should have one. We all should because it's, it's pretty hard to, to write a, an email that gets you to open it or, or to read a subject line that gets you to open it right then and there. So in an autoresponder series, typically um, an autoresponder can, can run forever, but it's usually a series of seven minimum in a, in a series, and there's lots of ways to use autoresponder series, which I'll – also get into here in a little bit. Um, I think short and pith sales letters where you use bold, you use underline, you use white space, um, and link them out to a site. I think it's great to link people out to a site either to read the whole email if you can write a compelling enough um, paragraph or if you're trying to get them to do something that you have a, a call to action that takes them somewhere where they'll where they'll get information. And you know you want to keep that short and pithy too, usually um, a landing page that's you know, somewhere between three and, and 500 words long. So email is also great for testing a larger campaign um, on or offline. So you can test and refer to direct mail piece, say, um, find out what, what's getting the most response, and you can do it very inexpensively as compared to the price of mail. You know, are, are people responding to certain subject lines slash, you know, headlines in, in mail? Um, are, is a certain um, sequence working? So in other words, um, subject line and email, half the people to – to one page and half the people to another page. You know which one which one works better. 
so you can, you can get a lot of data um, before you do a bigger spend. You can test the campaign itself, and lots of you know lots of variables to test. Of course, you want to be scientific and make sure you're not testing too many things at once. Otherwise, um, it becomes impossible to to understand your data and know um, exactly what's working. So opt-ins are really the most valuable asset that you can have pretty much, I mean, in, in business, because what they are, are people who have opted into a list or people who have raised their hand and have, at one point have said, I at least have some interest in what you're offering. And those are people that you can market to in perpetuity until they say, hey, stop talking to me, stop writing to me, take me off your list. Um, because in theory, they have some interest in, in what you're offering. And so they're, it's, a, it's a targeted audience. You, know, you don't want to exhaust them, and you don't want to just be throwing stuff at them. But what you do know is you have people who, at least at some point in time, had an interest in what you're, in what you're offering. And, of course, unlike um, more traditional media, you know, it doesn't cost you anything more to keep that person um, active. So you want to avoid spam. I know that's, that's obvious, yet it's important to, to stay up to date. If you're in the, the market of writing and sending emails, um, try and subscribe to some um, to some inter to, to some what am I trying to say? I'm sorry, I'm losing my words here. Subscribe to to some newsletters or find some good sources for what's happening now in email. What are what are people using? What is, what's working? What isn't? Um, just so you you can stay you know if not ahead of the curve, at least flowing in the curve, so your your email has a better chance of being open um, and being read. So. You know, headline and body content. When I say headline, of course, I'm talking about subject line. To be aware of is free. Um, you know, free does not make it through the spam filters. Guarantee um, also gets caught by spam filters. Money, you know, or using the phrase money back, or using dollar signs. I mean, that's why you see people have been, you know, uh, you know, capital F uh, asterisk, capital R asterisk. You see all these these ways that people are trying to get around the spam filters. Um, so that they don't read what the word is. But I think it's better to just not use them because, you know, people themselves have become pretty good spam filters and you can, you know, you can spot a come on. Um, you know, phony come ons, I think people don't respond to, oh, just for you. Or, you know, the, the jury's out on this, you know, whether to use a name and personalize. Um, I've, read, I've read statistics that, you know, the name pulls and I've read statistics that the name doesn't pull at all and there's no point in using it and wasting the, you know, wasting the space. And I'm talking about, you know, like a name in, in the subject line, like Amy, um, we created this just for you. It's like, yeah, no, you didn't. Um, so it's, it can be kind of a turnoff. Um, you know, in terms of subject lines, you know, here are some, some just good little tricks of the trade. You know, odd numbers are intriguing. You know, don't say it's 90% better. Um, if, if it's a lie to say it's 91% better, then lose a point and say it's 89% better. It sounds more real. Um, anywhere you can use odd numbers. You know, why he paid $8,612 for his website is way more intriguing than why he paid eight grand. It just is. It's like, whoa, that, that's specific. It draws you in. 78% um, of dieters need this. Um, I read a study recently that said putting video in the headline um, makes people more likely to open it because they like to watch videos. So video message about diabetes, for example. Um, a free report. Um, well, you've got the word free in there, so... Um, you have to be careful, but I have read that the phrase free report pulls really well. Free report, you know, here on sailing down under. Um, value, offering, um, you know, and, and you could you could, you could, could uh, frame the free report um, concept a little bit differently so it didn't say free. Uh, uh, offering value, five deadly mistakes most marketers make. Um, and then it could be, you know, anything that you're offering there. Or weird or odd, I said, this is one I saw that got my attention last year. Um, photos and clothes do not bend. You know, it's like, what? It was just goofy enough that, that I opened it. It's like, okay, where are they going with this? Because, you know, obviously there's no photos enclosed. Um, or do not, there could be photos enclosed in an email, but do not bend. You know, it's it's kind of kind of intriguing. Um, you know, why I love ho hotel bars, why thin people age faster, you know, anything that, that just might be um, intriguing enough for someone to say, oh, you know, I'll, I'm, I'm curious, I'll, I'll click on that, I'll give it, a, you know, give it a moment's attention. So your subject line has to get as much thought and attention as, as a headline does in any other piece, and maybe even more, because it determines whether the, whether the thing gets open and read in most cases. Um, you know, sometimes the sender will determine whether it gets open and read. If you have someone you follow, you're going to open it no matter what the subject line is. You don't really care. Otherwise, it's it's really important, especially um, if you're if you're messaging um, cold or to somebody who isn't going to recognize you or the name you're you're writing from. So email can be a complete message with a call to action. 
um, and that can be a standalone or a series, and each email in the series can have a call to action, ask somebody to do something. Um, you can have a short teaser email that links out to the web. Um, you're always going to have follow-ups in a series. I mean, you're never going to send just one email um, and call it good. And even if you're renting uh, time like on a, on a server, um, you know, typically you're buying enough data usage that you can you can email people several times because repetition really does matter. Repetition builds trust and credibility. It just flat out does. And so, you know, you never want to do a one-off. I mean, even in direct mail that's true, and people, you know, often don't want to mail more than once because it's costly. But, you know, if you're going to mail, plan to mail enough times that somebody has a chance to get familiar with you. So if they, you know, sort of blow it off the first time, they can say, wow, this is coming again. Huh, well, maybe I better take a look, or maybe I ought to take a look. And it also, it, it becomes real, and it has credibility, because you think, well, they wouldn't keep sending these if they weren't working. There's all kinds of, you know, subtle psychological things that go on. We may not be thinking that out loud, but um, familiarity and repetition really works in marketing. And if you have a call to action, um, You'll notice this. Start paying attention when, when you get emails from uh, marketers who you think do a good job. They usually have a call to action that repeats twice in the email and once in the PS, or sometimes three times in the email. So what you want to do is give somebody a chance at any point to jump out of the email um, and take advantage of the call to action, go wherever it is that you're directing them to go. Um, here's just a couple of interesting factoids for you. 64% um, of people say they open an email because of the subject line. Subject lines fewer than 10 characters long had an open rate of 58%. Um, I have a really hard time creating a, a subject line with fewer than 10 characters. If you know, if you can, you know, send me some samples. Hats off to you. I, I found that a real challenge. I read this and tried to do it and um, kind of threw up my hands in frustration. Um, personalized subject lines are 22.2% more likely to be opened. And, you know, here's this thing where I said the jury was out. I didn't find to put in this presentation um, the, the, <laughs> the opposing view here, but I have read it. So, you know, again, I would encourage you to test. You know, Amy, you know, this, this, and that. Like I said, to me, that feels like a come on because I know it's not personal unless it's, you know, for my brother or for my friend, and then they never use that. So it, it, it never feels um, warm and fuzzy to me. It feels, it feels fake. But I will add my caveat here, which is one of the biggest mistakes in marketing is mistaking yourself for your market and thinking everyone feels like you do, and mostly they don't. So be aware of that. Um, you know, many email programs at one time showed 40 characters across, and so it's become this narrow email has become a, a standard because it used to work with, um, you know, some of the, the old email programs or email clients. But um, it's also much easier to read. If you if you look at those those short lines, it's way easier to eyeball. And not everyone has or has HTML turned on. That's still true. And you know that's another debate is you know you know are they are is that important? If somebody's not using HTML and I want to send an email that looks good, you know, am I better to capture the wider audience by having something that looks great and forego the people that can't read it, or do I want to you know capture everyone? And that's a that's a marketing decision um, that you have to make. All the time, you know. The, the, in generally, in marketing, you, you don't want to rule anyone out. You don't want to miss an opportunity. You want to appeal to most people. On the other hand, um, you might appeal to more people if it looks better. So that's you know that's something that you either have to choose or test or both. Um, pictures are okay in email, um, but default because if all someone sees is a picture, um, unless it's a really compelling picture, chances are they are just going to um, click on to the next thing. They need to know what it's about um, and not, not just visually, unless the picture, you know, maybe has a head, headline or, you know, like I have this billboard here. Um, you know, if you've got a picture like that and it's, it, but you had something on the billboard that was really compelling, well, there you've got, you know, the, the advantage of, of the picture and the copy. And so you can use something like that. But, but, you know, be careful about just using cute and clever pictures that convey maybe an emotion or a feeling or an idea, but don't tell people why they should go further. Um, you know, here, here's the, you know, the, the all-time admonition, concise and real, you have three seconds to get their attention. Um, now, people are busy. We all know that. But if people have opted in, they do want the message. That doesn't mean they're going to read the message that day or that time. Um, but if, if people have opted in for something, you can assume that you've got, a, you've got a certain readership and you can create a, a continuity on your you know, on your on your messaging, 
but this is one of those things where if, you're, if you look at your data and you look at your statistics, um, you can start to see a pattern um, of who does what, and sometimes even who does what when, so you can, you can get more opens and more reads. Um, people are used to spotting junk, but they know what they're, you know, people know what they've, they've opted in for, and all of the well-known email programs and softwares and, um, you know, online programs have analysis, and I don't mean just analysis to read, you know, your statistics post-mail, but to um, analyze your actual content for um, white listability and see if it if it will pass through filters, and they'll often make recommendations about what you um, might change. And then there's other, you know, having multiple IP addresses and you know how how many how how much you throttle and how many you send at once, just in terms of um, of getting through and actually getting into people's inboxes. Autoresponders are a real opportunity for copywriters. Um, everybody needs them, and it, you need them for every product for every free giveaway, and continuity campaigns are really important. And so what that means is it, you want, once people buy something or download something for free, it doesn't matter, what you want to do now is you want them to engage with the content or with the product. And so think about your own patterns. You know, how often have you downloaded something that you actually really want? It comes through your email and you say, oh, I'd really, you know, that's good. I'd like to read that or that would be useful for me. How often do you read it right then? Or do you more likely download it and put it on the side, and do you sometimes or very often forget that you even have it? So if you do that and you've downloaded it and now you've got it on your computer and you get an email from me tomorrow saying, hey, listen, it's great you downloaded this. Did you check out you know, on the statistic on page three, blah, 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 and you go, oh, really? Huh, maybe i got to take a look. And then I just keep um, sending you email, maybe five, six, seven emails to get you to interact with the content. Likewise, if you've bought a product, might say, you know, hey, listen, because you know what happens. You can buy a product, maybe it's a software product, and you just don't get around to using it. Um, and so you've, you know, you, you put it aside, and maybe, you know, your 30-day free trial runs out, and you think, oh, I'm not going to pay for this thing. I haven't even used it. But if I can catch you early when your interest is high and engage you with using it and tell you how easy it will be and how it will change your life and make your life easier, um, you might just get a lifetime customer. So for new products or services, stick notes are really important. Um, stick notes come from traditional marketing um, where someone would buy something and you send a note telling them what a great decision they've made. And it, it's, a, it's a really good, good technique to use because when you think about it in the buying process, you know, when you decide to buy something, um, you know, you've convinced yourself that it's a good idea, you're going to spend the money, you've done all the things that you need to do to get yourself to, you know, crack out your credit card, and then you spend the money. And what in instantly happens, you know, if the pendulum is all the way to the excitement um, side of the, the spectrum, it has nowhere to fall but, I mean, nowhere to go but to fall and drop in the other direction. And you start saying, oh, should I really have sent the money? Am I going to have time for this? Do you think it will really help? All the things, all the messages um, to, to start running through your your mind, and then you get a note saying, "Hey, that was a really great decision. You know, buying um, X Y Z is going to really change your life. If you if you just spend five minutes a day in putting your data, you're going to find that you're more organized, you're less stressed. I mean, all of these things. You go, oh yeah, that was good. I'm glad I bought it. Um, maybe the next thing that comes is, you know, how to use it. Uh, maybe it's a free report, and it's how to get the most from the report. You know, if you if you do this, you know, we've designed it so that you can implement these simple steps. And if you um, just read, you know, one page a day, which will take you, you know, approximately 98 seconds, um, and implement the tool that'll take you another minute and a half. You know, by the end of a week, you're going to have this or this or that. So you're, you know, you're still selling, you're still cajoling, um, and tempting people to to come in and make use of of what they've what they've either downloaded for free or um, or bought. So existing customers, um, why do you have an excuse to email them? Well, you know, you want to keep your name in front of them, and maybe you have new news, something new with your company, a new way to use a product that they have, um, some helpful information that ties into into something um, that they own. If you sold them a car, maybe you want to tell them, you know, a little maintenance tip that if they, you know, they do this, they're going to get, you know, an extra, you know, X number of miles from their um, from their tires or their brakes or whatever it is, um, just keep keeping in touch, <clears throat> letting them know that you um, you know that you haven't forgotten them, but in in a way that's meaningful to them. If you have any special offers, if you have any relevant information, um, I have a client who who sends out just interesting 
um, bits to people, just interesting things to ponder and think about. And he gets good feedback about it. People like reading them, and they've come to expect, you know, sort of some quirky, interesting thinking from him. Um, <clears throat> So frequency. I get asked about this a lot. You know, I think you have to use common sense. You have, don't overload people. No one, you know, un, unless you're somebody that's that's well known or somebody's following. I think they probably don't want to hear from you every day. Um, I know that I don't, and some people differ um, on their on their frequency tolerances. And maybe it depends how busy you are or how much time you have. Um, I prefer not to hear from somebody every day. Although there are a couple of people I subscribe to who I will look at what they send every day, and if it's a title or a topic of interest to me, um, I'll usually read it right then and there, because I know if I don't, I won't get to it later. But I know it also can, it can have some, you know, some good beneficial information relevant to what I'm doing right then. Um, you know, some people think, you know, every day when you're doing a campaign and there's a, a time sensitivity, every day is fine. Um, use small bite-sized pieces be sure you break it down because you know it being your topic, but they don't. And this is a really hard thing to do for people. Um, and this is where, as a, you know, as a freelancer, as a marketing strategist, and/or a copywriter, you can be really helpful. You can help people um, sort of break it down to, you know, what what do, what do people need to know? You know, are you are you telling them something at too sophisticated a level so that they can't use it? Are you telling them too much? That's a, that's often a fault of mine. As I try and give. Um, too much information, and you know, and people, you know, they blank out after a certain point. You have to, you know, you have to give people um, bite-sized pieces and, and the amount that they can handle, or it starts to get overwhelming or feel complicated. And often, your clients are too close, um, or we are too close to our own our own business. So, linking out to landing pages I mentioned earlier, getting traffic to the site whatever site, is, uh, is is critical for a whole variety of reasons. You want people used to visiting your site. You want them to come there um, just like you want people to walk into your retail establishment. You want people coming back to your site, um, which is why it's really good to populate it with fresh content, um, something new, a testimonial, a new video, um, white papers, free reports. If, if people come to your site and it looks the same all the time, they, you know, they stop seeing it. And maybe, you know, re repeat visitors um, – aren't important, and maybe what you're bringing them to is, is a landing page. But bringing people off the email onto somewhere where you have their focus and attention is really valuable, because if they're reading everything in the email box, something pops in, gets their attention, boom, they're gone from, um, from, from your email. But if they're linked out to a site, chances are that you know, you've, got, you've got better attention. Of course, it's great for, for Google um, and SEO and getting found. The more um, you know, p more people visit the site gets, the, the more popular it is, the better the rankings. Um, so that just makes sense too. And you know, along those lines, video is really um, great for that. It ranks really high. But just adding continuous content, um, <clears throat> Google changes changes its algorithms quite regularly. But just in this last year, um, they've been able to parse more for real content. So you know, this, this old content where it was you know keyword stuffing. Um, so, you know, you wanted to have uh, the word video, um, and you would write, you know, some inane piece that was 500 words long and used video in places where it just didn't, it didn't really make sense. It wasn't a particularly helpful or useful or informative um, piece, but it, it mentioned the, the keyword so many times that it got rankings. That just doesn't happen anymore, so, um, <laughs> which is really good news. Good content is, um, it, it has rules of the airwaves now, which is just much better. So newsletters, email newsletters are a great vehicle. Um, the DMI, and then this is old, you know, 2009 is getting to be a long time ago now, um, but I haven't found a more recent statistic on this, but the DMA reported that email's return on investment in 2009 was $43.52 for every dollar spent. That's phenomenal. 44% uh, of email recipients made at least one purchase last year based on a promotional email. And 60% of, of U.S. Internet users say their motivation be behind giving their email address to a company is to receive discounts and promotions. So that means people are paying attention, and there are things that they want and use. And you know, we we all know that from our own patterns and habits. But I, th I think it's it's important to remember because we, you know, there's there's so much clutter out there that you know the key is having a focused target audience who really want to see what's what's posted you know content that stays and lives on your site is is a more a more permanent and lasting um con content and contribution you know for you and ultimately for your readers and visitors um interesting chris brogan 
best-selling author. He has a lot of interesting, um, a lot of interesting things to read that Chris Brogan has put out. Um, the president of New Marketing Labs reports 93% of email users have opt-in relationships with consumer brands, as opposed to 15% with Facebook and 4% with Twitter. Um, so it's interesting. You could be very tempted to spend more of your time on social media because it's where the buzz is, but is it where the money is? So list building is critical, and I mentioned that earlier. The reason list building is so critical because you have a, a, a group of people who are interested in what you have to offer, who, who have raised their hand and said, yes, I want to know, and now their ears and eyes are open, and they're willing to listen to and look at your message. And so you can be really creative, and if you're in a, in a retail business or working with a retail business, you can find people online and offline to, to opt into an online list. Um, it requires some diligent strategy to get your name in front of people and also to give something of value in exchange for people's email address. And it's, it's so funny. I just had this conversation with a client yesterday, um, actually with his marketing director, because he is very hesitant to give anything away because he's afraid that you know people will perceive if he if he gives something away that it doesn't you know that that what he offers doesn't have value. And my strong belief is if you give away good stuff then people say, "Wow, if I get this for free, what do I get when I spend money?" Um this is really good content. It allows you to build a relationship and and allows the the presenter of the content to build credibility and trust. And so I think it's really really important your best stuff because you know a, on the contrary, if you have people opt in and you give them something that's crap, you know what kind of impression does that make? And they're not likely to come back for more. And so I think I think it's a it's a hard hump for people to get over. But I think giving real value for free, um, you know, is part of the give to get culture of the internet. And I think it's really important. Um, and you know, you can get a message out. I mean, everything from you know having a sign up on cereal boxes. Um, you know, to the auto mechanic that when, you know, you sign in for your oil change, you know, they, they have an iPad and they have you, you know, sign up for something um, and you get something fun in exchange maybe. I mean, maybe you get the free cup of coffee they were going to probably give you anyway or, or whatever it is. But, you know, you can build a list anywhere. Um, it doesn't just have to be online. And sometimes um, it can be really creative and, and, and get more response if you do it offline. So the bottom line is it's a great marketing tool. Um, and the list is I, – well, I just think that if you don't have an opt-in on a website, you're just wasting the most valuable <clears throat> use of that real estate. And there are so many people who don't – who just don't use it still. They don't give anything away. They're not capturing who's visiting. I mean, if, if you know, you – just think of it. I mean, you have people coming to a website, and, you know, you can look at your report and see there were X number of visitors and this many new visitors and this many repeat visitors. But if you have no way to, to reach them – um, and you find out, you know, somebody's read through your whole business proposition, but you don't know who they are. Um, isn't that a lost opportunity? Don't you want to be able to follow up with them and, and make an offer to them? Um, I think it's just it, it's such a, a missed opportunity to, to not do that and not do it actively. Um, and re so remember, you know, when, again, you know, email doesn't have to be clever or gimmicky. You can just keep it real and relevant. Um, same is true with your giveaway. I mean, if you if you if you give them the real goods, you're going to make an impression, and people are going to stay. And I thought this was a really interesting um, statistic here. The hours between 2 and 5 p.m. are the most active hours of email opens by time of day, um, and that's from email on asset. Open rate optimization is their perfect time to send your email. Um, great little factoid, and it's new. It's from 2014, so it's 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 new and it's relevant and it's real right now. Um, so stories, you know, what, what can you tell? What people often say, well, I don't have anything I can, I can tell them. You know, what do people want to know? You know, social media has, has sort of changed the, the, the discourse, and things have gotten much more personal because it's easier to learn personal things about people, and we see them more multidimensionally than we once did. And so, you know, stories, facts tell, stories sell. People love stories. And so, you know, it could be um, a winemaker. I was writing for some um, – some winemakers, and what we would do is, you know, tell stories about what was happening day to day. You know, what's happening this year? What's happening with this vintage? What are the soil conditions like? What's happening with the weather? What's happening with, um, you know, any, anything else that's going into building that that bottle of wine? Things with the labor, things with the, you know, what's the real work behind it? And people are really interested in that. And not only that, but they feel like they have a real relationship um, with the people who, you know, grew this bottle of wine for them. 
and it can be it can be very relevant and very real and and you you know you develop a, a sort of loyalty because these become people that you feel like you know um, a great example of that is is <clears throat> here where I live there's a, a local fish market run by a couple um, you know, very successful really they, they just they run a great business everyone in there is friendly they're helpful um, you know, you go into the store and there's a you know little sitting area with all these cookbooks, and they have a, a photocopier, and they encourage you to sit and visit and um, <clears throat> make photocopies of recipes. And it's very, they've, they've they've been, and so she'll tell you about you know store. There's some of their stories at sea and what they're catching and what's running and what's sustainable and why. Um, and she's she's just got a great way of writing that's very engaging. They're short and to the point. There's always a recipe and there's always a special, and so you know what to expect. And almost every week I go in and buy whatever the special is. I might go in more than once a week, but, you know, it, it works every single week. Um, maybe it's the gardener who tells about the English garden tour she took, you know, and why and, you know, who she met and, you know, what she, what she snuck back through, you know, what trees she snuck back through customs on the plane. Um, you know, the auto dealer that talks about safety and innovation and maybe, you know, road trips or vintage cars or, um, you know, whatever kind of stories, you know, working on their you know, working on a, you know, car with their kids or, you know, whatever it is. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> sorry about that. I don't know how you can choke on tea. I just wanted to wet my voice a little bit. Uh, sorry. Anyway, um, you know, personal is a stretch for some people. It's really hard for them to sort of get out of their business persona. Um, and this is, you know, probably more for, for middle-aged and older people than it is for younger people who who are more used to social media and, and kind of having a, a more public persona. But it's <clears throat> it can be really valuable and very important. So build relationships and make offers. Make regular and valuable offers. And, you know, you can make them exclusive to, to your newsletter readers. You know, sign up for the newsletter and you'll, you know, you'll get offers that, that you don't get. I'm on a bunch of um, text offers now from different restaurants around town that I like. And I'll get a, you know, an email that they're doing a craft beer thing tonight, come in. Or I got a text, a text rather, <clears throat> not, not an email. I got a text yesterday um, from a lunch place that I like to go to for falafel every now and again. You know, we miss you. You haven't been in. Come on in and, and get a, a, you know, I don't even remember what the offer was, but it was a deal. It was a two, some kind of two-for-one deal. Um, those things are really, you know, really relevant, and they work. <clears throat> you know, the media is a little bit different. But, you know, short, sweet, to the point. And <clears throat> this is a good fact, too. 67% of, of U.S. Internet users say the motivation behind um, giving their email addresses to receive discounts and promotions. People want them. So back to this time of, of sending. Um, typically, there's, there's three times that people check email. Um, some people are checking it constantly. But, the, you know, there's your first batch that you go through, which is usually your biggest batch. You come in in the morning, you eyeball everything and decide what you need to deal with, what you're going to delete. Um, at lunch hour, people do another check, usually before and after lunch. But if you can get them before lunch and you've got something um, <clears throat> that they might be interested in reading, they might, you know, um, things that are a little bit more interesting or engaging. Um, and we, as you saw earlier, two to five is the biggest time for, for email opens. Um, I don't know that it's the biggest time of action, but it's a big time for opens. And, you know, weekends work for offers. You know, there's a real blur now between the personal and business inbox, um, you know, particularly with tablets and smartphones. People are, are checking stuff all the time. Um, and, you know, sometimes on the weekends they'll devote a little more time. I know I do sometimes. I'll, I'll eyeball my email and maybe something I wouldn't have read during the week when I had some pressing deadlines. Um, you know, I'll, I'll open or scan and eyeball. So, you know, you might want to take advantage of that time of week for certain offers. And if you're doing something like a newsletter, you know, it doesn't always have to be the same length, but format is pretty important and structure because if people get used to it and they know that, you know, say so you always have a – um, like the newsletter I referenced from the, the fish market. You know, she always has a story, she always has a recipe, and she always has a special. And sometimes I don't have time to read it, but I scan down and see, oh, salmon's on sale this week. Huh, that's great. Maybe I'll, you know, plan it for, for dinner whatever night. But I know that if I scroll down, I'm going to see what the, what the special is and what the price is. And so um, I'm habituated to what she does. But if it, if it didn't have the same pattern, I might, I might not eyeball it or I might go and see it's not there. I have to look for it, and I'll do it later, and then boom, I'm lost. Um, 
Here's a nice little, another nice little factoid. Consumers open 19.9% of the marketing emails received on Tuesday, more than they do any other day of the week. Um, another statistic that followed that is the second best day is Friday. Oh, look, here it is. Huh. I thought I didn't include it, but I did. Consumers click on marketing emails most on Friday. So I've already said that I think not having an opt-in and gathering names on your site is a big, is a, is a big mistake. Um, but so the next thing is, is it prominent and easy to find? A lot of people use WordPress these days, and so the you know the three column format you have the you have you have an opt in on the right side. That's where we're used to seeing it. That's where it should be. Um, you know, make your you know free report say yes, I want my copy of, or I want it immediately download. You know, make it a little more active so when somebody clicks and gives you their information, you know they're they're saying a big. Um, this is again. 2010 is getting a little dated, but 55% of users say their their main motivation is giving their email address in exchange for a freebie. Now, if it's a really good freebie and you follow up on it, um, you know you can you can build a buyer. So, this whole opt-in um, form and what goes behind it can be a, a great business opportunity. Um, important. And you know what is what the, the value of having an opt-in list, and then find people who don't have an opt-in, ask them why, and you know you can create those free papers, uh, for, excuse me, free reports and white papers for them, um, and that could be a really nice turnkey business. I mean, you could do it in a certain niche, like in real estate, or you could do it across the board. It, it's harder, of course, when you do something across the board where you're writing real estate one day and. Um, you know, about manufacturing the next and maybe about insurance or finance the day after that. But it can also be really interesting. Um, if you're a, you know, if you're a quick study and you, you, you thrive on variety, which I do, I get bored when I do too much of the same thing over and over, um, it can be really interesting. So 57% of Internet users worldwide said they're more apt to buy a product in a store after getting a marketing email. Um, pretty interesting, pretty interesting little fact, and I think it's important to remember that there is an online and an offline connection, and that people still do business in brick and mortar stores. And you know, there are some people who feel really strongly about supporting brick and mortar stores, um, but you know, they're still online all the time, and it's a great way to reach them. And and you know, since we're used to getting email. Um, you know about information products and things that are that are going on, but not necessarily things that are going on um, locally or local offers. Although it's become more and more common, um, I think it's it's something to to really keep in mind and remember the interaction between online and offline, particularly when you're writing for for clients and you know and helping them create a big picture to see what's go what's going to actually um, help them to do more business. So you know email marketing works. It's a viable medium and a strategy. I think, you know, it's, as there's more and more clutter, I think you have to become more, <laughs> pay more attention to targeted. In other words, you know, give, you know, give to get. I think, just think it's really, it's a really important concept. Um, but build the list because people are listening. Um, value, you can, you can continually do business. So the assignment for this week is to write a promotional email. Oh, look, there's a typo there. It's a, a, pro, a promotional email. Um, I tried to edit some of this and put in some new factoids that in, in, in a hurry before I did this this morning, so my bad. Um, but write an email, and, and write, please write a promotional one, not a promissional one, um, promoting this class you're taking now um, or something you're actually promoting, you know, whether it's, it's for you personally or someone you're working for or for the company you work for, or if you're thinking of launching a copywriting business, maybe think about that, wrapping your mind around you know, how, would you, how would you promote um, your own copywriting business. And there's some interesting strategy around that that we will, that we will also talk about in the, um, in the final module. Um, again, any questions, just send them my way on Facebook, and I will look forward to reading more of your great. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.